All right, today I'm gonna to show you a question, a couple questions that you can use to build massive urgency in your prospect's mind for them to buy now, not push it down the road. Now, these are what are called consequence questions, all right? These are called NEPQ consequence questions. You wanna learn more about that? Make sure you join our free Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro, to get a list of those so you can get into our different training programs for your industry. So right after you ask a consequence question like, John, what, are the, what happens if you don't do anything about this and the situation gets even worse? What are the ramifications if your company doesn't do anything about XYZ problem? Oh no, I know we need to do something, blah, 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 blah. Then you're gonna ask, so, Okay, why look at changing this now though? Like why not push it down the road like, and you're gonna insert something negative that they don't want to happen, that they're afraid to happen. And I'm gonna show you a couple different industry specific examples so you can see the formula. So make sure you pay attention to this video over the next few minutes and you can write in what you sell. So you ask the consequence question like, oh no, I know we need to do something. To further that gap, to build more urgency, you're then gonna follow up and say, so why look at changing this now though? Like, why not push it down the road like, now, what type of tone did I use there? That was more of a skeptical tone. Now, why would I be skeptical there? This obviously isn't in the first couple minutes of a conversation. This is more towards the end of that conversation. Because when I'm skeptical there, it forces the prospect on the other end to defend themselves on why they have to change now, not push it down the road. Do you see what we're doing there? The best salespeople in the world are salespeople that sell where the prospect doesn't even feel they were on a sales call, where the prospect literally doesn't feel they were ever sold, yet they bought. That's when you start to master the power of human persuasion. If your prospect feels like they're being sold and you're push and pressuring, that means you just haven't got there yet, okay? But keep working on it. So why look at changing this now? I mean, why not push it down the road like X, Y, Z? Well, the reason why we need to change now is, and they start to tell you why they feel they need to change now. Let me give you a few different industry-specific examples. Let's say you sell solar. We train, man, I don't know, tens of thousands, I think, in solar now. We even have one company that has 10,000 reps we train in this industry. So you're getting towards the end, and their biggest thing is they don't wanna pay the rate hikes. They wanna lower their bill, their power bill, and they wanna lock in the rate and eventually not have a bill after it's paid off after 25 years. No, I know we need to do something about this, Bob. Okay, but why look at, at changing this now? I mean, why not just push it down the road and keep paying the rate hikes like a lot of people do who don't know anything about solar? Now notice I made a few tweaks there. Okay, but why look at changing this now? Like, why not push it down the road? That's the same. Why not push it down the road? And then, do you see what negative thing I put in there? Keep paying the rate hikes. See, that's the negative. They don't wanna keep paying the rate hikes that they're experiencing every freaking year, which has gotten way worse since COVID. Okay, but why look at changing this now? Why not push it down the road and keep, look at my hands, if I'm in person or on Zoom, and keep paying the rate hikes like a lot of people do who don't know anything about solar. Now. Do they wanna be like a lot of people that keep paying the rate hikes because those people don't know anything about what? Solar. Now it's hard for this prospect because they now know about what? Solar. So they don't wanna be like all the other homeowners who are forced to pay the rate hikes because they don't know anything about solar. See what I just did there? Well, the reason why we need to do this now is I'm just tired of these increases and blah, 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 blah. See what I just did there? That cements that sale. That gets the prospect to pull you in even more rather than you trying to push and pressure. It's so much easier to sell when you learn what I'm showing you here. Let me give you another industry specific example. Let's say that you're selling business consulting to companies. You help you know, uh, change their operations, their systems, marketing. It could be a lot of different things to help them scale the business. So you see what I'm gonna do here. So why look at changing this now though? I mean, why not push it down the road like unsuccessful companies would? Now that business owner doesn't wanna be what? Unsuccessful. So if I say, why not push it down the road like unsuccessful companies do, in their mind they're like, I don't wanna be like those companies, I wanna be successful. So the reason why we need to look at this now is because of X and Y and Z. See how I'm getting them to do all the work. 
See, I'm showing you how to get your prospects to do all the work. You've been forced to learn that you have to do all the work. You have to do all the selling. You have to do the persuading. You have to overcome their objections. What I'm showing you, and especially in our virtual training courses for our clients, is how to get your prospects to do all the work how to get your prospects to sell themselves, how to get your prospects to want to change, how to get them to pull you in. So much easier when you learn what I show you here. Okay, but why look at changes now? Like, why not push it down the road like unsuccessful companies would? See, I'm asking that once again in a skeptical tone. See what I'm doing there? Okay, let's give you a few more examples here. Let's say you sell employee benefits. You're in B2B sales and you're talking to larger corporations, could be even smaller companies, it doesn't really matter. See what I'm doing here. Okay, but why look at changing this now? Like, why not push it down the road like a lot of companies do who end up losing their top people? Now, what's the negative thing for those companies that would cause them to want to get better employee benefits for their employees? They don't wanna lose their top people. Now, there could be other reasons. Maybe they're just overpaying where they shouldn't be. There could be other reasons why they're interested in your services. Let's say that they were concerned that they were losing some of their top people to XYZ, their competitors, and they're like, we've gotta make some changes. Okay, but why look at changing this now? I mean, why not you know, push it down the road like a lot of companies do who end up losing their best people? That's gonna be stuck in their mind. I always want to usually include that towards the end, that negative thing they don't want, the negative consequence of them not changing, because it forces the prospect on the other end to be like, well, the reason why we have to do this now is because you know we just lost our VP, we just lost this you know regional coordinator, she was really good, and they left because you know we didn't offer the same insurance as XYZ competitor. And they start to think about the consequences if they don't change with your solution. I'm gonna give you one more here, pay attention, this is really important. Let's say if you sold life insurance or mortgage protection, we train tens of thousands in this space. In fact, employee benefits are trained tens of thousands in that space now too. All right, so same thing. Look at the negative thing I posted in here. Okay, but why look at, at changing this now? I mean, why not push it down the road like a lot of men who end up forcing their spouse and kids to have to be responsible for all the debt and expenses when they pass away? Now, you would only say like a lot of men if you're talking to a male. If you're talking to a woman, let's say the woman was the main provider in that household instead of the man, you would say the same. But why look at doing this now? Why not push it down the road like a lot of women do who end up forcing their spouse to have to pay for all the debt and expenses when they pass away? Well, and that causes them to emotionally attach like they're looking at their spouse, the one they love, their kids that they love, having to be forced to pay all the debt and expenses because they didn't do anything about financially protecting their family. It's very hard for them to be like, oh, I'm not gonna do this now. Like, well, the reason why I need to, okay, but why look at doing this now? Like, why not, you know, push it down the road like a, a lot of men do who end up forcing their spouse and kids to have to pay for all the debt when they leave? Or I could, I could even change it. Like a lot of men do who end up passing away years before they thought they would, and now their spouse is responsible for all the debt. Well, the reason why I have to do this now is because of, see what I'm doing there? Okay, so I'm gonna go back to that first paragraph here, the generic version, and I want you to look at what you sell and then plug in the negative thing right here they don't want. So why look at changing this now though? I mean, why not push it down the road like, and then you plug in the negative thing that that prospect fears and does not want, and watch how your prospect starts to build urgency in their mind and defend themselves and tell you why they have to change now and not push it down the road. More importantly than them telling you, who are they telling? They're telling themselves. And that, my friends, is how you get prospects to persuade themselves. That's one little piece of that puzzle. Now, you want all the pieces of the puzzle because this is like one piece out of you know, 110,512 others, okay? Uh, if you want other pieces of that puzzle, make sure you subscribe to this channel, okay? When we usually do a couple of these YouTube videos per week, make sure you subscribe and you get notified. Hit the notification button some, somewhere on here to make sure you get notified on these. And then make sure you join our free Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro. We go live in there three or four times a week, different Q&As, different trainings. And then you want more advanced training than what I do on YouTube. What I'm showing you on YouTube is very basic compared to what our clients go through and our virtual training courses and our group training with myself and all of our sales trainers, like what I show on YouTube is like not even a tenth of a tenth of 1% of the training we do for our clients who are in your industry. 
and that's why they're making two, three, even five times more than what you are now. So enjoy the, the YouTube stuff. If you want more advanced training, make sure you join our free Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro. Hope that helped you today.